Hello everyone, this is Kathy from House of TOEFL and today we're going to take a look at how to write a very good body paragraph. Now I only have one here and of course you need two, but this is just to give you the idea of how to construct it. So if you have not watched my video about how to write an introduction, please go back and do that and I will put a link to that in the description below because obviously you start with an introduction. Now, let's look at my first sentence and I'll tell you why this is a good sentence. I like to start with to begin with because many students start with first of all and I feel like the ETS has seen that a lot. So I like to start with something unique. So I start with to begin with. In my second paragraph, I usually write what's more. The other thing that makes this a good sentence is it's long. So it's not weak. If it just said to begin with, uh, you can make friends in the dorm, period. That's a weak sentence. So I try to have a little bit of a longer sentence. Also notice I use an idiom in the long run. Now feel free to use idioms if you are comfortable with them. If you're not and you're not sure how to use them, don't use them. But if you're comfortable with them, you may use them. Now in the long run just means over a long period of time. And since I'm comfortable with it, I can use it. Now the second sentence is just there to actually make my first sentence a little bit stronger. Living in dorms gives students the opportunity to meet people outside of their major field of study who may become lifelong friends and allies. And this is a long sentence again, because you need sentence variety. I have synonyms here, friends and allies. So I'm showing the greater, I know more than one word for friends. I know the synonym allies. And that's a long sentence, but that brings me to my next point. And my next point is that my next sentence is very short because you wanna have some short sentences mixed in there. And I start with the very simple, I start with very simple for instance, when I was living in student housing, I met a woman named Sarah. Now, I want to show you that I have grammatical variety here. I was living. That is the past continuous. But then in my next sentence, I have the simple past. She was, we had. And that's because you also need grammar variety. Now I have the word although. Nice transitional phrase, the show cohesion. Although she was studying pharmacy and I was studying dentistry, we quickly realized we had a lot in common and began to spend a lot of time together. Then I have the word eventually, which is a discourse phrase. These discourse phrases, they show cohesion also. So you can look up discourse phrases. Um, this is used to show the order that things occurred. Eventually we graduated and both got married, but we continue to be friends even today. When I needed a loan to buy my first home, I asked Sarah and she helped me out financially, providing me the money for a down payment. So I have some nice vocabulary here like financially, loan, down payment. You definitely want to vary your vocabulary, but at the same time, you can keep it simple. Don't try to use words that you're not comfortable with. Then again, I vary my grammar. This is the future. I will always be. So I have some grammatical variety here. I will always be grateful that I lived in the dormitories rather than with my parents, since that is where I met my best friend. Now I wanna to talk to you a second about this very last sentence here. This example clearly illustrates the fact that living in the dormitories offers advantages that are not available if a student stays with their parents during their education. So, I've been getting a lot of essays lately where the student will attempt to use the past unreal conditional. That means they will write something like, if I had not lived in the dorms, I would not have met my best friend, Sarah, and I would not have gotten a loan for my down payment. Now, there's nothing wrong with the past unreal conditional, but that's very advanced grammar. And out of every 10 essays I get that attempt to do that, for the last sentence of their body paragraph, only about one student does it correctly. So I always have a rule of thumb 
That means a general rule. Keep it simple. It's better to keep it simple and get it right than overcomplicate it and get it wrong. So there's my body paragraph and that's what makes a good body paragraph. You are very specific with your example. You have sentence variety. You have grammatical variety. The last sentence reflects back on your main prompt to show it's not tangential. You're still staying on the point. You're still making the point that dormitories are better living with your parents. Uh, you're not going off into uh, another topic. So that brings it back to the thesis, but don't overcomplicate it. And that's how you write a good body paragraph. Okay, I'm Kathy from House of TOEFL. My website is www.houseoftoefl.com. Be sure to subscribe below. I've been making a lot of new videos lately. So just click that subscribe button and come to my website for much more of my content. And as always, good luck on your TOEFL test.